Among the 150 SE-30 created, a tiny part gotten the HOTA Determinations tuning. It had racing style cams, variable intake ducts, variable exhaust, and two roof mounted ram air intakes, the latter of which would be used in the SV. The output was increased to 448 lbft and 590 horsepower. It was tested to 207 miles per hour by the Italian publication Quattroruolt. The HOTA didn't agree with emanation guidelines in EU and USA. In any case, this didn't make any difference to most its proprietors, like the ruler of Brunei. Diablo Roadster are experience with the Ferrari 308-328 GTS demonstrated that open-top sports cars are frequently more in demand than hard-top models. As a result, Lamborghini finally offered the Diablo a roof that could be removed. The engine lid, which was completely redesigned, could be stored above the carbon fiber roof panel. The VT four-wheel drive chassis served as the basis for the Diablo Roadster. Diablo SV in English, the suffix SV, stood for super fast. It first made an appearance in the Miura P400 SV. Lamborghini used the name again on a new Diablo in 1995. The Diablo SV's tuning was geared more toward racing than road use. Its quicker acceleration, stronger brakes, and shorter final drive were all well-liked by many publications. They thought it was the best way to handle the Diablo, even beating out the SE30. Power was increased to 510 horsepower thanks to bigger valves, faster cams, and HOTA-style ram air intakes. A stripped-out cockpit also helped reduce the curb weight to 1,570 kilograms. Thus, the SV remained among SE30 and the standard Diablo concerning power and weight. However, due to the short list of standard features, it was significantly less expensive than the SE30 and even less expensive than the standard vehicle. The shortest final drive ratio resulted in the smallest brother's 186 miles per hour top speed. By the by, with the significantly better taking care of, who thought often about the Babel maximum velocity. In mid-1998, Diablo SV was overhauled with a better motor. Two-stage variable valve timing at the inlet valves was added to the V12. While torque increased from 428 lbft to 450 lbft, power increased to 530 horsepower. In addition, the VVT empowered more force at lower RPM, accordingly in-gear speed increase was significantly better. In addition, larger brake discs were added, measuring 335 mm at the rear and 355 mm at the front. Consequently, larger wheels measuring 18 inches were used to accommodate the brakes. Plus, ABS and airbags were at long last accessible to Lamborghini. The new SV may be faster than the SE30. 208 miles per hour was claimed by the factory, one mile per hour faster than that special edition. Yet, what dazzled me was not the generally pointless maximum velocity, it was the more honed taking care of, the quicker speed increase in addition to the better drivability in the new variant that kept me reliable with the huge Lumbo. Lamborghini was successful in preserving Diablo's exotic qualities while rationalizing its shortcomings. Diablo 1999 Again the entire Diablo family got a few minor changes. The engine and performance remained unchanged, but the interior was completely redesigned, with a simpler instrument panel that made it easier to read. Near the new glove box, an airbag for the passenger was added. 
Electronically adjustable dampers were the only mechanical change. The SV's 530 horsepower variable valve timing engine was now shared by all Diablos, including the standard Diablo, VT, and Roadster. The sweeping SV graphics that had been displayed at the sides were removed for SV. However, the fixed and semi-recessed headlamps, which took the place of the well-known pop-up headlamps, were without a doubt the most distinctive new feature. These lights, obtained from Nissan 300ZX, didn't look as snappy as in the past yet they were important for the organization's work to reduce creation expenses. The Diablo GT was the fastest Diablo ever because it was the street version of the GT2 race car. The bore of the V12 was increased to 6 liters. Went with lightweight titanium interfacing bars, quicker timing camshafts, individual choke for every chamber and amplified slam air admissions at the rooftop, power bounced from 530 horsepower to 575 horsepower, while max force expanded from 448 lbft to 465 lbft. That meant 210 miles per hour maximum velocity. However, Two additional final drive ratios can be used to reduce top speed to 199 miles per hour or 204 miles per hour while increasing acceleration. You can tell where it came from by how it looks on the outside. The large air intake on the nose brought cold air to the oil cooler, which was moved from the engine bay to the front for better weight distribution and higher cooling efficiency. A brand new air scoop on the bonnet let out hot air from the vehicle. Additionally, the brake cooling intakes were expanded. Downforce was increased by a black carbon fiber lip spoiler, side skirts, and rear diffusers. Twin centrally mounted exhausts took the place of quad exhausts. It used a camera instead of a rear mirror because the ram air intake made it hard to see behind it. By reading the LCD monitor in the center console, the driver could see what was going on behind the vehicle. In dry weight, the GT weighed 1,490 kilograms, 80 kilograms less than the SV. Carbon fiber was used in all of the body panels, with the exception of the steel roof and aluminum doors. Magnesium intake manifolds were used in the engine compartment, resulting in a weight distribution of 40 colon 60. In addition, Lamborghini likewise broadened the front track by 110 mm. Modified front suspension calculation solidified the springs and mellowed the dampers. The end result was quicker low-speed turn-in and increased stability at high speeds. The new suspension made the vehicle remarkably balanced at the cornering limit and significantly improved its handling. The controlling feel was astounding, out of the blue light and precise, albeit the vehicle actually felt huge to deal with. Oversteer or understeer could be controlled perfectly by choke. The GT Diablo had the best handling. It was unfortunate that it was a one-time production with only 80 units produced. Diablo 6.0 VT Since the L147 project, which would become Murcielago, was being re-examined by new proprietor Audi, the Diablo needed to get another update in year 2000 to occupy the delay. The 6.0 VT was the outcome. The Audi designer gave the body a facelift, mostly in the nose and tail. With the exception of the doors made of aluminum and the roof made of steel, nearly the entire body was now made of carbon fiber panels. Cylinder heads, intake manifolds, and the 18-inch wheels were made of magnesium. By the by, 
evaporate weight actually went to 1,625 kilograms due to the obligatory all-wheel drive and a considerable amount of standard types of gear. The V12 was exhausted out to 6.0 liters, notwithstanding titanium associating bars from Diablo GT, lighter driving rod, individual loop on plug start and two-stage variable exhaust. For consenting clamor guideline without losing power, it was moderately appraised at 550 horsepower and 458 lbft. In comparison to the GT, it didn't have a ram air intake on the roof, which meant it could use a rear view camera, and the cam timing was faster. The 6.0 VT, like the GT, received wider front and rear tracks. In particular, 60 millimeters were added to the front to boost stability and turn-in response. However, the viscous coupling four-wheel drive introduced a significant amount of understeer as it approached the limit, making it less agile than the lightweight SV. In terms of performance, the majority of road testers thought it was slower than the SV because it carried more weight. Inside was managed with carbon fiber while position of pedals and stuff switch were likewise worked on a smidgen. Thanks to Audi's involvement, the final Diablo was unquestionably the friendliest and most well-built of all.